You're welcome back. It's time now to go to the press and see what the headlines are this morning in the national dailies. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and my name is Jamgul Agaji. Okay, we're starting today with Nature News. Nature News headlines. Uh, the first headline there is Nigeria needs 3.4 trillion naira to tackle flood disaster. That is according to Presidential Council, and you'll find that story on page 3. We also have uh, Dangote Refinery Petrol hits market July. That means we'll have to wait till July before we begin to uh, see the dividends of uh, having that. Environment monitor flags of uh, renovation of conference hall. Okay, uh, we have Biodiversity Day. Expert demand collective efforts to build back uh, biodiversity. Biodiversity experts uh, are calling for collective efforts. Okay. That will be for uh, Nature News. Oh, there are so many other headlines in Nature News as well. We have this one saying, um, Embrace agriculture with technology advancement. That will be on page 11 if you get that Nature News. Additional, Africa needs $2.7 trillion to finance climate change. You'll find that on page 9. Additional is the president of the... Um, Africa Development Bank. Okay, SGF Lords Adamu over passion towards sustainable development. All right, Nigeria bas wheelchair uh, is so odd. Nigeria wheelchair basketball picks 2023 African Games ticket. Well, I didn't expect to see that on Nature News, but as it goes, that's how the cookie crumbles. That will be all from Nature News uh, this morning. We're moving over to what we can find on the Nation newspaper. The Nation newspaper leads with, we borrowed for projects to create wealth, says Buhari. The writer there is President Speaks on Debt Burden, Second Niger Bridge Roads, Offices Inaugurated. Uh, we also have uh, the story that about the tribunal. Tribunal orders consolidation of PDP, LP, APM petitions. OB, LP, get three weeks to prove case. Hearing must end August 8. Witnesses to testify from May 30. Okay. Um, up on that newspaper, at the top end of the newspaper, you find Biden's team uh, for Tinobu's inauguration. Blair will, la will back incoming government. Okay, those are um, the words of uh, uh, foreign countries, other countries saying they're going to back it. Tony Blair was a former UK minister. Foreign students barred from bringing family members to the UK. Uh, stop harassing Kogi officials. Supreme Court tells anti-graft agencies. Agencies, yeah. And uh, then... Uh, Belema, Belema Oil President Jack Reed celebrates wife Elizabeth at 30. Okay, um, that's not much of a headline. Okay, happy birthday to whoever is celebrating. We move now to The Guardian. Um, the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian leads with the... The Guardian leads with uh, division over oil search in north as NNPC returns to Lake Chart. That story is on page six. NNPC is returning to late Chad to look for oil. Buhari clears over 40 pending memos, appoints agency heads. Nigeria absent as African leaders fault global debt financing models. You'll find that on page 16. Um, we also have in the Guardian, Concerns as Buhari withholds assent to sexual harassment bill, days to exit. We find that on page four. We also have Supreme Court cautions against harassment of Kogi officials pending outcome of suit. And page three, we already found that in the nation. Buhari's fragile pieces, governance sans rule of law, part two. Okay, that's an editorial on The Guardian. You can read that up. 
and it continues on page 12 from page 1. Okay, we'll move to the next um, newspaper and the final one for this morning. That is The Punch. The Punch leads with uh, a story on security, Tinubu's inauguration. Security agencies raid hotspots. Biden names U.S. delegation. The riders there are housing and urban development secretary to lead U.S. team to May 29 handover. Security agencies to restrict movement to Eagle Square beginning from Friday. UK ex-Prime Minister Blair meets President-elect, says running government a tough job. Other stories are CBN revokes 179 microfinance banks, others licenses. You may want to read that up, especially now that a lot of people are banking with these microfinance banks, a lot of them whose presence on, on the internet as, is more than the usual banks that we have, the orthodox banks that we have. So you better re read that up and find out if one of the banks you're banking with is um, among the 179. Panic in Oshun as 35 pupils hospitalized after inhaling tear gas. We hear that the police fired tear gases and pupils are hospitalized because of that. I'm also to blame Dangote relocated refinery to Lagos, Abiodum. I'm also to blame Dangote relocated final refinery to Lagos. Okay, maybe it was supposed to be, to be located in Ogun State, but now it moved to uh, Lagos State, and I'm also to blame. Tribunal, Atiku Obi tackled Tinubu as hearing begins on Tuesday. That's on page two. And uh, finally, on the punch, Buhari years, infrastructure deficit remains wide. That's a story also on the punch. Well, those are the headlines that uh, we are going to be taking this morning. As much as possible, we will take these headlines. And we have uh, to discuss with, it, with us uh, Mr. Tunde Kolo. Kola Wole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State. Tunde, good morning and welcome to the program. Tunde, can you hear me? Good morning and welcome to the program. I can't seem to hear Tunde talk back to me, and I do hope that he's going to correct whatever the problem may be and that get back to me. We need to discuss a lot of these things that we have found in the headlines. Some of them, we know them already. Uh, we need uh, more insight to it, especially as Tunde is a legal practitioner, and we're hoping that he's going to unravel some of the things that we might find as gray areas when it comes to the tribunal that is the talk of the town as it is because May 29 is here and we have three months, we have from now till August actually uh, to make sure that everything is heard, every judgment is given, justice is being done if the most, that's the word I'm supposed to use and uh, we will have an authentic uh, president or we will have someone, um, you know, we'll, we'll find out what will happen after August 8th. Tunde, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Beautiful, beautiful. I was the one who couldn't hear you. Let's begin with some of these uh, uh, headlines. First of all, division over oil search in North as NNPC returns to Lake Chad. In the 21st century, we're returning to Lake Chad to spend all the money to look for oil. Is this a good venture or not? Yeah. Let, let me say that uh, it will be good for us that we continue the search. Uh, you and I will remember that oil has been found in the Jail Republic and some parts of Cameroon and uh, the northern part of Nigeria belongs to that uh, uh, basin. So if it is possible to get oil, in uh, Niger Republic and some parts of Cameroon, I should think that it's not impossible for us to also get oil in the northern part of the country. Yeah, but to me, my concern, uh, Kobe, my concern excuse me. Um, and I think uh, the matter of what we're about have been said to uh, contain uh, oil deposits. 
But the question to ask now is uh, when it is discovered, is it likely to be in commercial quantity? If it is not in commercial quantity, then the exercise might not be worth the while. Furthermore, you must remember that oil is uh, no longer an energy source that the developed world exactly. is occupied with. Exactly. Even here in Nigeria, we are beginning to see glimpses that sooner than later, oil will become an obsolete source of energy for technology. The Lagos State Government, for example, has started investing in electric mass transit. Mm. The whole of Europe and America today they are talking about clean energy. So, why we are the third world country, why the oil we see the useful for us, we shouldn't devote too much energy and resources to the development of oil when the whole world is now turning away from it and looking for very clean energy to power engineering homes, technologies, uh, and what I know. Furthermore, the oil that has been discovered from part of the north is a lesson to us as Nigerians, and especially to the Niger Delta people. Before now, long before now, I have always said that uh, the people in the Niger Delta should be magnanimous and be ready to share the process of oil with their counterparts in the north. That it is not impossible that oil could be discovered also in the north. And that even if it is not discovered, oil is likely to be like coal, which nobody is uh, using obsolete uh, energy. So when that happens, and things are discovered in the north, like gold as it has been discovered today, uh, lithium and what have you, will the Niger Delta people be happy if they know, say they are not willing to share the process of that uh, discovery and with them? The answer is no. So the lesson here is that we all require to be our brothers keeper, no matter what circumstances that we find out. Okay, um, well, the because I was concerned about the fact that a lot of money will be voted into doing this to explore uh, and get whether they are going to have uh, oil from the north or so. Uh, why not use this into uh, and use this on clean energy and what the world is diversifying into and all that. But here we are looking for oil at this time and buying electric cars on the other hand at the same time. And I was getting worried whether we are wasting money or we are using it um, well. Because if we spend billions, we've seen situations in Nigeria where committees are set and money is voted for these committees to look into an issue that required less money than what was going to be given to the committee. For instance, if, let's say, ASU is looking for $100 million, you set up a committee and give $120 million to the committee to look into the issues of ASU. And things like that have happened in this country. But that's matter for another day. Right now, we've heard that the, uh, everything about the election petitions tribunal should end uh, if we understood it well. Maybe we didn't understand it well. But they said everything should end in August. By August 8, everything should be ended. And then there is this uh, need for the consolidation of the cases of PDP and Atiku and LP and OB and the APM together, consolidation. So what does, does that really mean? Is it going to affect um, the outcome of whatever is taking place at the tribunal now or not? Let Help us understand why people, three individual people, will have to merge uh, their cases together, and what does that really mean to the layman? Tunde, can you hear me? Have I lost Tunde's audio again? That will be unfortunate. Hello, Tunde, can you hear me? Well, we seem to have lost uh, Tunde's audio. I'm sure he can hear me wherever he is. And uh, whenever he's back, we're going to bring um, that to the fore. 
Uh, we're going to be looking at the headlines, or we are looking at the headlines on the national dailies. And what I wanted him to really talk about right now was the fact that uh, the courts have asked, the tribunal has asked the Atikwa Bubaka, the presidential candidate for the PDP, and Peter will be the presidential candidate for the Labour Party and APM to consolidate their cases. We do not understand what that is and how it's going to affect the outcome of the whole process. So we needed him to explain that to us as a legal practitioner himself uh, so that we get to know because some people are saying that it might affect it negatively and all that. So, Tunde, I, I understand you're back. Can you hear me now? Yes, I'm hearing you. My okay, friend. good. Help us and explain to us what this really means, that the tribunal has asked, that um, uh, has ordered, in fact, the, the consolidation of uh, PDP, LP, APM petitions. What does that mean, and how is it going to affect the uh, general outcome of the exercise? Well, it's uh, simply put, it just means that uh, rather than take uh, the petitions uh, one after the other, mm. all the petitions will be had at the same time, uh, and then ruling or decisions or judgment will be given uh, uh, one. Because you now have three petitions before the court, and uh, if it has to be taken one after the other, uh, the tribunal might not be able to conclude this assignment within the allotted or within the law a uh, given uh, time I think which it should do its uh, work which I think is about 180 days but I suspect that it should save time and uh, make room for expedition the uh, hearing and delivery of uh, whatever decision might come from the petition that's right. Uh, but I, I don't know. These are three individuals, let me put it that way, because PDP and Atiku, and then we have the LP and OB, and then the APM. And they're now bringing uh, people who should have been talking from different perspectives that will now bring them together. And it's like a, a me against them kind of thing. I don't know how that works anyway. But you are the legal minds, and I, I do hope that... Uh, they know what they're doing, and a lot of people have expressed the fear that it might, it might give us an, an outcome that we did not like. So one fails, everybody fails. One wins, everybody wins. And if there's a win for the people who are petitioning, who takes the spoils? I don't understand. Uh, we lost your audio for a while, and if you're back, can you continue, please, to, uh, to you know, address the issue? Okay. We're still expecting uh, today to rejoin us. Um, we lost this audio there. And if you can hear us as soon as you, you get that back, please let us uh, continue with what we're talking. But li like I said, um, PDP is a different entity. LP is a different entity. APM is a different entity. And all their grievances may not particularly be the same. So right now they have to uh, merge them together so that they the judgment will be fast, the, the, the proceedings will be fast, and everything will be fast about it. But like I asked, if jointly they have this case and judgment is passed, if it is in their favor, who takes the spoils? If it is not in their favor, what can they do? Can they now go back as individuals to a repetition or to go to a higher court of competent jurisdiction and seek for redress or something. I do not know, understand all these things. Tunde, we really need you to come right back and explain to us some of these things that we do not understand. I don't understand it, not being a legal practitioner myself. Are you back there, Tunde? Oh. Okay. We're still awaiting uh, Tunde. Uh, he, he might come back anytime. But um, we do know that a lot of things are happening. August 8th is like the deadline. Uh, everybody's expecting that everything will be done. Uh, but um, uh, we're just keeping our fingers crossed. Whenever we have the opportunity, we'll have uh, the experts unravel the situation for us. Tomorrow, or rather, May 30, hearing 
actually begins. Witnesses will begin to say what they're going to say and all that. But this is a time to call on Nigerians. Uh, if you know something that will help in this case, whether it is for the president-elect or against the president-elect or whoever else is standing trial as it is, uh, please come out to say that. Uh, whether it's in any space, but bring your evidences. Don't, not conjecture, not, not supposition, not not just uh, assumption. If you have concrete evidence that will help in this case, or monitor the case, even if you don't have any evidence, just monitor the case and know what is happening in your country and let's know how Nigeria goes. Dividends of democracy is not building of roads, it's not building of bridges, it's not building of schools. That's what governance is. Governance has no, no type of government as it is. Governance, whether it's uh, um, autocracy, whether it is... Uh, uh, democracy, whether it is whatever kind of crazy, it means that you will have to do these things as a must. Even if it is the Queen of England or the King of England as it is nowadays that is superintending over the entire UK, he will still need to do things, build bridges, build other things that need to be bu built, uh, bring schools, uh, bring healthcare and all that. That's not democracy. Democracy is the fact that you and I have a voice. We decide what happens in our community. We decide who governs us at any point in time. We decide how our country is run. So if people are in court because they want to rule our country or they are ruling our country, we should get interested in it. Whatever we can do to make sure that um, process is seamless, that pro process is transparent, that process is good enough for all of us, we should do it. I'm not calling on people to go and protest, that's not what it is. But I'm calling on people to be interested in whatever happens or whatever will ultimately lead to the kind of Nigeria we want our country to be. So get interested, listen to the radio, uh, watch uh, television, uh, read the newspapers, go on social media. But if you are on social media, be sure to decipher between what is good and evil, what is true and what is false, and get, a, get some kind of a checklist and say, okay, this passes the test, this must be true, and all that. Check your facts and all that before you go public if you have to tell somebody else about what is happening. But go to everywhere you can get information. Be interested in your country because the more people uh, who are interested in what happens in our country, the more the people who are leading us will sit up because they know that we're looking um, like they always do the sign. My eyes are on you. If they know that our eyes are on them, then they will sit up and do what is right. Ask the relevant questions. Go to places where you can find out what is budgeted for what and how it is being used and so many other things and cry out when you see that it is not done well. I'll give you an instance of things that are not done well and you can cry out. There was a time I was traveling from my village to uh, the state headquarters. I come from Cross River State and my tiny little village is Bansara and a less than one kilometer from Bansara itself to the major highway uh, we used like two hours because the road was terrible and we had to go in that car. The road was terrible. I got to Calabar that evening and I saw on the news, in fact, a documentary done about the road of Bansara and it was the smoothest road I've ever seen. And there was a signpost actually directing people to Bansara, a signpost I didn't see from a village that I came that same day and they said the road was done. And we cried out, at least, even if nothing is done, there will be people who will know that if they told a lie, the lie has been discovered. Whether the government does something about it or not is another case. Whether the relevant authorities do something about it or not is another case. But let them know that you know the level of lies or truth that they are dishing out to you. So get interested in your country, that's all we can say. There are a lot of things on the headlines. We hope that you will read them and find out what is going on in your country. Don't just sit and read things on the social media and watch skits and all that because at the end of the day, when everything goes wrong, when something goes wrong, we all will have to suffer for it. Well, this is our country. Let's sit up and do the right thing. Well, we'll take a break now, and when we return, we'll return with our next topic. Remember that the 28th of May 
is uh, World Menstrual Hygiene Day. And we'll be looking at some of the issues uh, in that regard. But just stay with us. We'll be right back in a moment. <laughs> 